Hi, everybody. I am excited to be here today with John Baker, the director of the Community Foundation of Central Missouri, and Erica Payne, one of my like right-hand ladies at May Create Design. She is the project manager for the Como Gives campaign that is our month-long year-end giving campaign in Columbia, Missouri. It supports 142 local nonprofits. It is like ran by the Community Foundation of Central Missouri. So John does like so much of the legwork and then he relies on Erica and I to be like his website marketing friends in the background. You do very well. So this year, how much money did we raise, John? One million six hundred fifty-one thousand eight hundred and two dollars and ninety-seven cents. I think now that number is a little different than what you said on the website because that number also includes those donors who were kind enough to prepay their credit card fees. So we took in more than what you see on the front page of the website, and we were stunned by that number as it ended the year. It's great. Like Erica was like announcing our like beginning our workshop earlier today and she was talking about Como Gives and when she said how much we raised I literally got goosebumps. Okay <laughs> now now I've got to say something else because you mentioned Erica. I want yeah. everybody to know that Erica Payne was the donor who donated twenty dollars <laughs> that put us over our original goal of one million dollars to where we were one million and three dollars at 4.33, I think, yeah. in the afternoon on December 22nd. Erica, yeah, right. you made the momentum to go to 1.6. I'm expecting like a plaque or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, I just gave you a beer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That works. <laughs> I was proud to know you, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. uh, I know the fame. It's so awesome that, that that was the way it happened. So we tried a lot of different things this year with the Como Gifts campaign. I mean, every year we try new things, right? But I wanted to take this opportunity for us to just kind of come together and just think through those things and what made it different, what made it better, what made it maybe not better. <laughs> so this episode is all about us coming together and dissecting the things and trying to figure out what contributed to this amazing outcome of an incredible $1.6 million in donations. Let's get to business. You're on a mission and you just need more people to know about it. And whether you're brand new to marketing or a seasoned pro, we are all looking for answers to make marketing decisions with purpose. I'm Monica Pitts, a techie, crafty business owner, mom, and aerial dancer who solves communication challenges through technology. This podcast is all about digging in and going digital. I'll share my marketing know-how and business experience from almost 20 years of misadventures. I'll be your backup dancer so you can stop doubting and get moving towards marketing with purpose. So, John, why don't you start us off and tell us the things that you think were like the biggest impact factors to get us to that $1.6 million mark? Okay, so looking at it historically, you know, we began planning for Como Gives 2020 before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, we had things in mind pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. And then we had some adjustments that we had to make once we realized that we had a pandemic in our community. And then as the year went on, there were some things that occurred that the nonprofits weren't expecting, that donors weren't expecting. Uh, you had a lot of people had reductions in income. They couldn't give what they wanted to. You had nonprofits who were not able to have their galas, their schmoozing events, you know, all of their wingding kind of things where they would raise money in the mm -hmm. traditional methods. And they were, you know, scratching their heads. What are we going to do? So their revenues fell. So you have a, a you know, a period where you needed money by the nonprofits. You had donors who wanted to give but couldn't. By the end of the year, some of those jobs were restored and some of those values of assets that had declined in the first part of the year were restored. And so at the end of the year, I think you had this confluence of things that came together. You had the donors who were aware of the need and therefore the real value and importance of their giving. Mm -hmm. And you had the organizations who really, really, really needed that income. And I think they worked really hard to get people to go to that comogives.com website and make donations. We had a flood of people on December the 1st, on Giving Tuesday, go to those 
organizations, I mean, our website for those organizations and make their donations. Erica, we had one third of our original goal of the campaign was donated on that first day. That's yep. like a pent up, you know, it's like yep. when the new Popeyes opened up on business <laughs> a couple of years back and you had people for two weeks lined up for two blocks, you know, to get a chicken sandwich. Uh -huh. you had people on December 1 really wanting to give and they did in spades and we were so grateful. Well, you know what's funny, John, it's usually, so we open it up at midnight and usually we're the first ones that give and we don't really see others giving. Immediately at midnight, we had like four or five donations. Yeah. Those people were told to go there, the organizations and the marketing and all the Facebook posts, all that stuff, directed people to go to the website to give on December 1st and to start the process. I mean, it all worked. Yeah. I think too, like after doing our donor survey back in June, like one of the things that the donors said was that they do look forward to Como Gives now, that they know about it, to do their online giving. So I feel like that gave them that outlet, like they knew it was going to happen so they could go out and give. But then also too, like if you look at this campaign, like any other new thing, right? You're, we've just been building momentum all these years. Now, this last year was way better than we thought it would be. But um, I do think there's something to be said about the longevity of the campaign and the like experience of the nonprofits participating in it as yes. well. Like they the experience are, of the donors. They're getting yeah. they're getting it figured out. You know right. how to do this and and how to raise money through this campaign. Confidence on both sides. Think about it. When we started Como Gives, online donating was brand new. Mm -hmm. There weren't very many people doing it yet. And mm -hmm. people didn't, you know, they were afraid to use their credit cards online. They weren't <laughs> sure if they wanted to do that. They didn't know how to do that. What would a checkout form look like? Why would we not want to just send a paper check? I mean, there's all kinds of reasons I could give people. But, you know, the confidence now in the process, confidence in the website, confidence in security, all of those things have, you know, been favorable and people now have more willingness to give online. Mm -hmm. We had like a huge number of websites, like we had 39% more visitors on the Como Gives website this year than we did in 2019. So we just, I mean, we had 44.7% more transactions, which means that was number of checkouts on the website. So that is just that many more people. And one of the things that I did wonder if it impacted that, like the new people coming in, was a project that Erica managed, which was the mailer. Erica, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So um, with COVID, the giving guide really wasn't a viable option because that's person to person handing them out. And so we brainstormed um, a, a way that we can still get a physical piece of paper out to people, letting them know about Como Gives and about all the organizations. And so we came up with a mailer that we sent out to a number of households within Columbia. And we put on, and it was challenging to get everything on this one front and back Very paper that we used to have how many pages. <laughs> <laughs> pages. Yeah. Down to one, 11. What is it? No. A little bigger than 11. No. It was 11. Eight and a half by 14. Yeah. Yeah. 14. Yeah. So, I mean, that took some, um, some creativity there, but we got it. We got it to work. And so, <laughs> and then John and I sat down and we decided where these were going. And, um, the benefit of it is that these got sent out to people that might have never heard of Como Gives before because it was going directly to their mailbox. So um, I think that it turned out pretty well, all said and done, honestly. And how many, John, did we end up sending out? Oh, probably 33, 34,000 yeah. different addresses. That's just so many more homes that would have ever received a copy of the Giving Guide. Yep. Yeah, you know, the giving guides are wonderful. I might have no complaints about the giving guides other than they weren't always distributed like we wanted them to be. Mm -hmm. And so there were a lot of them recycled every year. But mm -hmm. these mailers, you know, they might have been recycled, but they were at least getting into somebody's hand first. And everything was summarized on, you know, front and back. You don't have to, you know, leaf through to see how the campaign works. It was all right, right there, you know, on two sides of an eight and a half by 14 sheet. Like as a marketer, I do question and I would love to get some feedback from our organizations, like 
the number of organizations that had to go on that. And we even like accidentally missed a few, honestly, sorry about that. <laughs> we made up for it, right? It was 142 names on that thing. Like it makes me wonder from a marketing perspective, if it would make more sense to not have all their names on it, or if just the sheer volume of names is enough to let somebody know that they need to go out and give, you know, like, where's that balance there? I don't know. It's just me being like, I don't know. But I would love people's feedback on what they think would make a better mailing piece, something that's simpler that maybe just describes the categories and and the good things that happened with your donations last year or something that just has your names on it because that's the amount of space that we have you know it's just a list of names um yeah so one person asked if it was new organ because we bring in new organizations every year some years we bring in more last year we, in 2019 we brought in 20 or 31 in 2020, we brought in 21. So we didn't bring in as many new organizations as we normally would. Um, and, you know, you would think, oh, well, you're bringing in all these new organizations. And so they're bringing a lot more donations in. But in actuality, it's it's not usually the new organizations that bring in a lot more money. Um, there have been a few exceptions, though, when like certain like really big orgs came in. But um, so. For those of you who are wondering, in 2019, we added 31 new organizations. They collectively raised $118,793. And in 2020, we brought in 21 new organizations. They raised $81,737 collectively. So, so they raised less this year than before. So the increase was not because of the new organizations. It was just that people were more numerous going to the website. And I think, Monica, they were also making uh, not way larger, but slightly larger gifts this year. They they did. Um, the increased amount per transaction, according to Google Analytics, was 22.58 percent. OK, well, that's 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 more than I than than, than my math had. So uh, it's probably about 20 bucks. Okay. Is what yeah, that's good. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. usually it's around like 100 something dollars. Mm -hmm. And so it was a little bit higher this year. OK, so. Obviously, what one thing that went well is that we got like just so, so much generosity, like outpouring from our community, like it's crazy. Um, so, but other things from like a campaign management standpoint. Um, now, Erica, I know that you and John are like the heavy lifters at the beginning of this. So, tell me about some of the things that you think went really well from like a campaign management standpoint. Yeah. Well. You know, last year and well, I guess 2019, no, sorry, 2020, at the beginning of 2020, we we met up early in the year. You know, we had things planned out probably by February, March. And so we started as early as we could. Um, one process, so one of our first steps in this campaign is getting the organizations into the website and so that they can get all their information on their pages. And so that's um, a whole intake process. And I feel like, John, that went pretty smooth this year. Um, we, I don't recall any big mishaps. I don't recall anything not working right. Um, I know that we tested it a lot this year. We even had a few people test it that don't know anything about websites, which actually was really <laughs> good because they were like, yeah, we don't know what this word means. <laughs> so, you know, we had a lot of testing going on with it. And then um, again, the organizations are starting to know how this process works right. and we're comfortable we, with it. We, we did have the perennial issue because with nonprofits, you have a lot of transference of who did what one year to who's now going to do it in the new year. Yeah. And so there's always the, I don't know my login ID. I don't know my password. I don't know who the user was the year before. So a lot of those things we have to start again. So that is a little bit of a bump in the sign up process. If somebody's doing it cold for an organization that's been into it before, they may not have all the information they need to really start the enrollment process. So I don't know how we could make that easier for them, but uh, you know, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Yeah, yeah. That's, a good point. that's something that we can maybe try to get more information at the front for them so they don't have to come to us, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, the way that you made the instruction, the handbook, the guide on how to sign up, I mean, it's so, if you just walk through it, I mean, you can do it. I mean, you really can. It's easy. And we didn't have 
people trying to upload PDFs this year when we <laughs> wanted JPEGs. We didn't have, you know, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it was much smoother because of the instructions that were provided. So thank you one and all. Yeah. And I'll also say with that intake process, we were a little smarter this year and we asked for some additional information for marketing purposes too. And so right. while their brain was already compiling all this information for us, we had them put in some, and we had a lot of people put in some additional information that we get to use this year uh, or last year for the campaign. So that was also a great. Yeah. And all very helpful. It was super helpful. Like I remember the day that I exported all of the things that our nonprofits had put in and I read through like what they did with last year's donations and what they were going to do with this year's donations. And I was like, oh, choked up. I was like, holy cow, this is so amazing. And um, so it really did help me as I was writing the emails and that kind of a thing to really just get a picture. And they told us, you know, what what held them back this year? Like, what did COVID do? Um, what, like, how did it impact your organization? That helped a lot, like from a marketing perspective and like giving us what we needed to talk to people about in our marketing. Um, and then they gave us extra pictures too. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I got to use real pictures this year. Right. Some of those weird stock images. <laughs> you know, I tell this every time I get on one of these Zoom things or StreamYard things with you guys, but the nonprofit sector does so much important work that we take for granted. And it's stuff that nobody else really does. And a lot of it is hard work. And a lot of it is that interpersonal work. And it's re, you know rewarding and it's redeeming and it's encouraging and it offers life and hope for lots of people. Um, and you know, does things for the environment and does things for not just human beings, but their companion animals and you know, other uh, beings and organisms that we deem important to our life and our living and our happiness and uh, our creative sides, not just our nourishment and shelter, but our creativity, our art, our music, our forms, all of those things. You know, um, it's all in Como Gives, man. It's great. <laughs> You can find it all right there. And what's funny, you can find it all right there. Since you're up on that website, like all the organizations are listed on that website for the whole year. I use it as a directory, not yes, even kidding, to like find like people be like, is there an organization that does blah? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And the information's updated every year. Most of these directories <laughs> that you get that sit around, they're one, two, three, four years old, and all the data's dead by then, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like keeps giving. Um, so one of the things that... Um, <laughs> That who told us to do this? The the um the credit card fee donors covering the credit card fee. Do you remember who decided? I believe that we had talked about it for a number of years, but uh, John Poses with We Always Swing, I think, is the one who brought it up again for us this past year. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. And guys, I was blown away by how many people who decided to do that. Like there were tons, tons mm -hmm. of people who decided to cover over fifty percent. I think. I mean, that was awesome. So. Wow, people are even more generous than than ever. Um, so, Erica, another thing that we did on the website while we're on the website stuff is yeah. um, social proof pop ups. Like, I really wanted to do this last year, and we ended up tabling it. And then I didn't even know what was happening this year, and I went to the website, and they were popping up, and I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> Because I didn't know, and I was just so pumped. <laughs> so <laughs> explain what these are, Erica. <laughs> yeah, so it takes, um, so say John donates to the community foundation, he donates $100. This little pop-up will show up on the website at the bottom left, and it'll say, John just donated $100 to the community foundation. And so we had a ton of these pop-ups showing up just, reminding people that there are other people on the website right now that are currently giving. And so it was really cool to make it, especially in the time of COVID where, you know, you can't be as connected. It really made you feel more connected because you were on there with other people. And it was all, all real stuff. None of that yeah. was up. Those were no, all, it was real, all real, real yeah. names, just, just first names, you know, for privacy issues, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And we actually had to decrease it a little bit because they were going too frequently because <laughs> we had so many donations. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Yeah. 
<laughs> all those do cost a little bit along the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and then another thing that I feel like we did really well this year was we spent so much time making the website load faster um, because in previous years, it has not done its job efficiently enough when we had like a really big donor. Not when I say big donor, I don't mean like a lot of money. I mean, like if they're donating to 100 organizations, the website would just like pretty much go into a epileptic fit and right it the pro and it would go through it's just that that's not what the user saw so mm -hmm. um erica and john i know that i was on vacation when you guys actually made the final discovery of a way that you could make it load way faster you want to tell us about that <laughs> yeah uh well i mean it was a hard decision to make because we were finally able to see like what was taking so much time in the process after someone clicks checkout to when they finally are processed and taken to the thank you page. And what we found was it was the emails being sent because the way that we've had it set up in the past is when, if you give to 20 organizations, each of those organizations gets an email. And so it was sending all of these emails and then taking you to the thank you page. And so, um, once we figured that out, John and I had a conversation and we decided that it'd be best that we cut out those emails so that those donations go quicker. Um, however, with that being said, we do have a portal. So we do have a portal into which all of the donor data goes anyway. So we were kind of replicating services. So we were slowing down the process. We were slowing down and frustrating the donor's experience, which we don't want to do. And to enhance the donor's experience, we decided to do away with that receipt that went to the organizations because they were getting the donor data in the portal anyway. So the joyful thing this year is that everybody, all organizations, learned how to use the portal. They were all able to retrieve their donations. And I think personally, that's a great way to go for future years, to focus on the donor experience. And you still have all the information for the organizations. Yeah, and like we have many years thought of all kinds of different ways that we could deliver this information to our organizations in a way that was super usable to them. And I think we've just come all the way around to the understanding that they they, they need to go log into the website and get it. It's not that I mind sending PDFs at the end of every day or Excel spreadsheets or like delivering all those emails, it's like the website just, it can't handle all that extra action going on. It needs right. all of its processes to process all the orders. And that's what we learned. Plus people are now used to going, you know, logging into their bank to see their bank records. You know, mm -hmm. getting your donor data is just like getting your bank records. You, you log into your site and there's your information when you click on the appropriate links and you put in the time frame you're looking for. And it's really, you know, no more difficult and it works just exactly. fine to get all of your data every day or any time during the day that you wanna see who's done what when. Another thing that I feel like went really well this year is that we started our marketing earlier and we ramped it up longer. And I also feel like from a marketing perspective, we were much more, um, I felt like I had a clearer understanding that I needed to focus on the nonprofits participating and give them a super clear path. Like this is the thing that I want you to do. And I'm really proud of them because I know a lot of them tried things that they didn't, wouldn't have done otherwise. And it, it went like every single one of them that has reached out to me about it has said that like, Hey Monica, I sent the emails and, and people donated. Like I could see the donations come in after I sent those emails and I can totally tell that they did it because we got, way more donations via email this year. Like um, in 2019, seven percent of our donations came in from emails. And in 2020, um, 9.2 percent of our donations came in via emails. And that was one hundred and fifty thousand dollars versus sixty four thousand dollars the year before. So we over doubled the amount of money that we brought in via email. And I am just so very thankful that everybody trusted me enough to give it a whirl. <laughs> Um, cause I could definitely see it come in. Okay. So then, um, what didn't go well, John, I see that you mentioned in here, like some way high goals. So can you talk, yeah, you know, this is, this, this is something that I, I would perhaps suggest to a few organizations. We want you to be hopeful. 
We want you to plan. We want you to strategize. We also want you to have a goal that you can feel successful about reaching. Um, you know, there's no magic to signing up for Como Gives. There's no uh, real virtue in signing up and expecting more than you put into the campaign and some of your own knowledge base and your own experience that you can put into your strategizing and your outreach. Um, but, you know, putting a $100,000 goal up there when you only reach 10 can be kind of frustrating for you. You know, so we just want you to be mindful or let's just reduce it down by percentages. You know, let's say you're a brand new organization and you put $10,000 as your goal. We would love for you to reach that. But if you don't yet have a contact base, if you don't yet have, you know, a group of networkers who know about you, if you've not been able to be in the community to get the word out about yourself long enough, chances are you're not going to have $10,000 worth of donations come to that website. You might have just, you know, a thousand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just be a little bit realistic, I think, about your goal, but yet set it high enough that it's a goal that you want to reach for. I mean, our first goal of a million dollars was a reach goal. We had never received a million dollars in Como Gives before. The year that we took in 956, which was 2019, our goal was 900,000. So we went past that original goal, but we were still, you know, $44,000 shy of a million, and that's still a big step. So a million dollar goal was a reasonable goal, it was a reach goal, and we would celebrate it if we attained that goal. Well, we did blow past it for all the reasons we've been talking about today. Yeah. Uh, next, next year, I'm not sure. So let's just use the whole campaign as an example of what I'm talking about. I would love, Monica, next year to set our goal at, you know, $2.25 million. Okay. <laughs> that would be 800000 plus more than we took in this year. But see, this year was an anomaly, and I cannot expect that we're going to increase next year by 30 more percent like we went up by over 30 percent this year. Okay, good, because I thought you were because being serious there for no, a second. No, I'm not like, giving no, you a heart attack no. right now. Right. So <laughs> perhaps our goal for next year is going to actually be less than our total donations that we took in this year. Now, if we find along the way that we're going to be reaching that goal before the end of the campaign, then by golly, we're going to push it up to yet another larger number. But, you know, we want the campaign to, and the organizations to feel good about reaching a metric that they've placed before themselves. I can do this. I'm going to reach this. I'm not going to get frustrated or I don't want to feel awkward if I put a $30,000 goal out there and all I get is four. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that just raises more questions than it answers when that kind of thing happens. So we want to have our organization just be mindful, strategic, and, you know, have a pretty good way that they feel that they can celebrate reaching a goal through the campaign. I think the campaign is very, very helpful. And it's been proven to be so by people. Uh, this year, we had a hundred and 20, I think it was, 122 organizations uh, received $2,000 or more. We've never had that many receive $2,000 or more. It's not everybody can be a food bank. Not everybody can be a We Always Swing Jazz. Not everybody can be a voluntary action center. Uh -huh. You know, the meat and potatoes of the campaign is right there in the middle. Uh -huh. You know, those groups between 2,000 and 15,000. Uh -huh. That's the heart of Como Gives. And, um, you know, we, we're getting increasing numbers every year of organizations that reach at least that $2,000 minimum. You know, I would love for us to say we had 120 organizations that received $10,000 each as a minimum. You know, maybe we'll get to that someday. Uh, but just being realistic uh, for our goals. You know, I'll shut up. We get, we're getting a little bit of, like, feedback. Something. I heard that animal squeal in the background. It wasn't on my end. Yeah. So um, another thing that we haven't talked about that I think both went well, will absolutely do again. And then in some ways it didn't go as well is peer to peer. Um, so in 2019, we brought in $38,221 in our peer to peer fundraisers. That was 4% of our total donations. In 2020, we brought in $85,664 in our peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, and that was 5.3% of our total donations. So we brought in more donations 
and people were more likely to donate when they got to those pages. So that was huge. It, it meant that our organizations did a great job of finding their peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers and educating them and supporting them. Um, but I may have given in a few too many creative ideas according to John, when we talked about them, because there are some that were harder to facilitate than others. Do you want to talk on those? Well, I guess I could, Monica. Um, I'm gonna, I'm the gonna bottom line is we don't want <laughs> raffles. <laughs> and I'm hoping that organizations are listening because this coming year, we're probably going to have to just say no. So when the organizations reach out to people to do peer-to-peer -peer campaigns, please encourage them to be more creative than a raffle. Raffles are simple, but raffles are also not tax deductible because you're buying a chance. You're gambling at a chance to win, and the IRS does not deem that as a charitable donation. So that puts everybody in a weird spot. So to soften all of that, we've worked very, very hard to restructure them as best we possibly could. And then uh, there's a difference between what you do for one person and what you do for everyone. So instead of a raffle, maybe the organization and their sponsors of peer to peers could consider doing something for everyone who gives at a certain level. If you do that, then you're thinking in the terms of premiums, not necessarily in the terms of raffle or even of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Just doing something for a gift. So again, the spirit of a peer-to-peer -peer is that when a goal is met, the peer-to-peer -peer organizer is going to do something for the benefit of the organization or just to acknowledge thanks for reaching a goal. Mm -hmm. For example, a donor can, you don't have to be wealthy, but let's say that a donor is going to give $100 if all of the people in its network give $1,000 total. You know, so that's your challenge. I'm challenging all of my friends to give a thousand dollars total to XYZ nonprofit. And if you do that, I'm going to give a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's not a raffle. That's a challenge you're setting before people for an obligation you're going to do. Something similar is what some people have done in years past. If all of my friends will give two thousand dollars to my peer to peer, I will dye my hair blue. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking about that myself. I don't know if blue is the best color for me, but, you know, maybe a rich green. I'm not sure. Um, Great pink. Same yeah, pattern. or, you know, like the old ALS challenge, you know, you, you challenge other people to do something. They first have to make a donation. Then they get a right to challenge a friend to do something. And what I'm thinking of here is like the ALS um, ice water challenge. Uh -huh. If my friends will give $500 to XYZ, I will put ice water on my head and then I will challenge someone to do the same. So again, these aren't raffles. These are not premiums. These are creative ideas where the peer to peer person will agree to do something when the goal they have set for their audience, their network of friends that they use to publicize their peer to peer when that challenge is met. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a matter of sitting down on your bottom in a chair and thinking about what you want to do that is a little bit more creative and, and more in line with IRS regulations than a raffle. Yes. And like, I have to put in a pitch for a recent interview that I did with Unchained Melodies. They did a lot of peer to peers this year. Yes. Um, somebody called them the queens of peer to peer, which I thought that was really cute. But um so I interviewed them recently and they explained like how they managed all of that and gave some ideas for it. And I, that was super generous of them. And I learned a lot about it. I mean, they, they did a lot of different things behind the scenes to make sure that everything was working easily for their, um, their participants, their peer to peer participants, you know, and most of their peer to peers, when you look at them, in the rearview mirror, they were premium peer to peer yeah. where everybody yeah. who gave something got something. Yeah, there were not many raffle like things. They and were that's 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 a lot of work. I mean, you're yeah. putting a lot of expectation on somebody to do a peer to peer if they have to come up with something for everybody who gives. So yeah. when you set up a challenge for a network of people and uh -huh. then that goal is met, that is the challenge goal, then you just have to do one thing as the peer to peer person, either something you do yourself or something that you then challenge someone else to do that's related to what you've just done. John. 
Yes. You should do a challenge for all of Como Gives next year. Like if Como Gives reaches a million, we can hit you with the Gatorade. That would be something I would love to do. Now, I don't know if you saw the Community Foundation board members were on the corner of Broadway and Providence in the cold, cold weather for four hours, dressed as superheroes. And the reason why they did that was to encourage giving for Como Gives. But this was the first year that the Community Foundation board had 100% board participation in annual giving. You would think that all nonprofit boards do that. Believe me, they don't. And we've worked for years to get to that level where we had 100% of our board members give to the Community Foundation in 2020. And to celebrate that, that was the challenge, 100% board giving participation. Once we knew that was in the bag for 2020, then our board members, we had three of them, Nathan Jones, Amy Watson, and Marie Hunter, dressed up as superheroes and went on the street corners of Broadway and Providence, one on each of three of the four corners, and, you know, raising up Como Give signs, and people were honking, and, you know, you know, it was great. So that was a peer-to-peer. It was a challenge. It was met. And then they did what they said they were going to do, and there was no raffle involved. I think that's really cute. And I look forward to dousing you with Gatorade this coming year. We'll do it. <laughs> and a bag of Cheetos along the way. Cheetos. <laughs> We're gonna have to get Tyler to come to town so he can like lift up the Gatorade cooler. Yeah, for sure. That'd yeah, I hear those things are heavy. Maybe that's why they only do you it. You don't have to fill them full. You know, you can always just put a couple inches in the bottom, and it's symbolic but effective. Well, that doesn't seem to be fun, Rob. Just trying to help, Monica. Oh. You won't put ice in there. How about that? <laughs> and then you got to decide who's going to clean it up, Monica. Yeah, he's like, so much for celebrating with you guys once the campaign's done. <laughs> Gatorade. <laughs> okay, yeah. friends. So, um, any plans for adjustments for next year that we feel like we should share with our listeners? Well, you know, I don't know what we need to share with our listeners, but we did some things this year I'd like to do again next year. We did Facebook Lives for 40 organizations. I would love to see if there's a way we can do that again. Yeah. We did yeah. Facebook Lives with all five of our all four of our sponsors. Mm-hmm. I'd like to try to do those again. Um, you know, we will do some kind of public uh, paper marketing. You know, we don't yet know if it's going to be a giving guide or another mailer. They mm-hmm. both have their virtues. Uh, you get a whole lot more notice for the mailer. You get a lot more depth in the giving guide. Mm-hmm. And we cannot do them both. I just mm-hmm. want to lay that out right now. We cannot do them both. There's just not enough money, time, and resources to go into doing both. Which also is a little little reminder that Como Gives makes no money for the community foundation. The community foundation loses money every year on Como Gives. We do not hold back anything. We do not pad any of the things we do with Como Gives. Como Gives pays for Como Gives. And it's not enough. So I just want everybody to know, we cannot do the mailer and the giving guide. We have to choose one or the other. You know, somebody gave me, you know, $15,000 and said, okay, John, do a, you know, do a giving guide or do a mailer with the other. We would do that. Until someone steps up to do that, we have to I choose. I do wonder, and I would love to ask our audience, too, for their feedback on this. Because I, while I don't think that Como Gives needs to be a money-making venture, it would be nice for it to be a working even adventure. I mean, and that doesn't even count, like, all the time that is donated by all of our media sponsors. and oh, like, how much you guys put in pro bono, Monica, may create you guys... Forty to fifty thousand dollars worth. I know. I, know. <laughs> I was going to let you give that number. Thank you. Yeah. Um, they don't know that. They but don't it would that. be nice to think of a way that we could get that. You know, like that we could make it so that the community foundation wouldn't ever consider giving up this opportunity for our community. I'm not saying that you are, but like at a certain point, I'm certain that you look at it from like a checks and balances perspective, and you're like, whoa. This is costing us a lot of money. So if anybody has any ideas that don't include like dramatically raising entrance fees for our nonprofits, like what are other creative things that you can do 
to fund this campaign, you know, um, more sponsors. Maybe somebody's watching this right now that would like to sponsor Como Gifts. I would love your sponsorship and John would like to talk to you. <laughs> we have one company in town that's thinking about doing a, a, a modest sponsorship for the 21 campaign. Mm -hmm. Currently, our only cash sponsor is Commerce Bank that is our signature sponsor. Mm -hmm. That's a $10,000 sponsorship. We need that cash to make the campaign go. Uh, but there's another organization in town uh, uh, that is thinking about doing, you know, something for, you know, $2,500 or $5,000 as a second tier type sponsorship. We'd love to have a bunch of those. That would be really, 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 really helpful. And then if we had additional income like that, Monica, then that could help make the decision, too, about what kind of platform for the actual website to use. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have assembled our current website over the years and it works uh, your main code guy, Tyler, does a great job for us every year. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate your work and his work and Erica and everybody else so very much, you know. But is there an industrial strength website that we might want to think about moving to that, you know, larger businesses use a platform similar to, um, you know, this not a, it's not a negative judgment here. It's just that, mm -hmm. you know, Como Gives has grown. Yeah. You know, we're putting... $340,000 through that thing on that first day that, you know, and it wasn't struggling. The only thing that was no. struggling was the emails going out when yeah. people gave to so many organizations. You know, What's crazy is the first year that we ever did Como Gives, we powered everything with email forms. That's how we did the whole campaign. And I can't even believe it. And we've come so far with this website, but you're right. I mean, it's like um, right now, you know, it's, it's a multi-family home. You know, we might just need a whole condo complex to get through this, you know. <laughs> and so we just have to figure out what's what's what, you know. You know, and 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 if Como Gives catches on, you know, in other communities as well, you know, we've got a few from Jefferson City, a few from Boonville, you know, that didn't have quite the same, you know, come back and do it again this year that we thought it might. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, there's Mexico, there's Moberly, there's Macon. There's Boonville, there's Centralia, there's California, you know, there's, uh, of course, we mentioned Jefferson City, but, you know, there's a lot of medium-sized communities around Central Missouri that could also benefit from the campaign, which would yeah. only increase the numbers of organizations and therefore the number of donors and the number of transactions. Yeah. And really, the more donors that we get, the more exposure every organization gets, yeah. is it really does have a multiplier effect. It's it's pretty amazing. When we surveyed our donors, many of them said that they gave to organizations that they'd never given before because they were right there and they believed in their cause. And so they were happy to do it. And it's convenient. So it's it happens really every year. Yeah. Um, Erica, any parting thoughts that you want to add? Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, I just think every year we get closer and closer to perfection with our processes. <laughs> You know, so it's it's something that every year we learn so much and every year we take away and we think through how we can make things better. And I just, you know, it, then it, it comes through every year, too, because every year we get closer and closer. And so I just it's great. I love it. And then every year we have like some strange unforeseen <laughs> thing that we were like, and Eric and I like literally beat ourselves up about it. And John just kind of like takes it with a grain of salt. He's like, yeah, yeah. And we're like, how did we, how did this happen? Um, so those of you who are out there trying to do all these things online and figure it out right now, just know that it's going to, like stuff's going to go wrong and it's okay. It goes wrong even for, for us in our team that does things online on a regular basis and um, thinks like we have a checklist a mile and a half long. Something happens every year and we just get smarter. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> I can say that. Okay. Um, so if people want to get involved with Como Gives or if they have questions about last year's campaign, um, if they if you if you are a generous business and you would like to support Como Gives by being a sponsor, you can talk to Mr. John Baker. Oh, oh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> John, how can people get a hold of you? They can get hold of me by just going to our website, CFCM Foundation, Community Foundation of Central Missouri.org. 
and we have a contact page there and you can just put in a note it comes right to my email inbox about what you might want to know we would love to have new organizations in the campaign we'd love to have sponsors you know step up for the campaign uh, if you have helpful information feel free to send that to me as well uh, please don't send me ragging comments we get enough of those but if you have helpful information you know feel free to send that if you have a you know legitimate critique that's fine too but you know don't just complain or think that we're making money on stuff because we're not i just don't have time for that but i have time to hear good stuff that's helpful and encouraging and to benefit the nonprofit sector and i'm always open minded and open eared about any and all that stuff he really is like, there's been times when eric and i are like we're going to pitch this idea to john <sighs> there's no way he's going to let us do this and john you're always like yep yeah, that's a pretty good idea or you'll poke holes in it and then you'll be like, all right, let's do it anyway. And I'm like, <laughs> because I'm eternally, yes. I'm eternally 39 years old, Monica. So, uh, <laughs> me too, John. Me too. Isn't it great? Isn't it great? <laughs> some, some, someday Erica will be as old and mature as us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Erica. We'll make okay. it <laughs> I think Erica is actually like, like she has the soul of a grandmother she's like already I do there. Have <laughs> she has an old soul this is not her first time on this universe mm -mm. i am my my family actually makes fun of me for being a grandmother at heart yeah but that's what makes you so at what you do yeah <laughs> and 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 if the audience can't figure this out um i really appreciate these two women here and may create design they've been with us from the beginning there are others on their team that work very hard for us as well. They're just not highlighted on this video today. But, uh, you know, we appreciate them so very much and their heart for the community and their hard work that they provide. And you heard the amount that they give pro bono for this campaign. I hope that you appreciate them and um, value them as true community partners for the improvement of life here in Central Missouri. We're always happy that we get to learn and grow and help. And we are like, super duper proud of all the things that we've accomplished together. So yeah. And I definitely think a shout out to Tyler for our main developer because he has built this thing from scratch. <laughs> yeah, he really has. And he doesn't always love getting into old Tyler's code, but but he does it and he yes. works hard on it. So it he puts up with our crazy ideas too. <laughs> he really does. You've got to think that when we get done with our planning sessions and we go into Tyler and we're like, so this is what we're going to do this year. He's got to be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> nods his head and he's like, sounds good. <laughs> okay, well, thank you everybody for your time. Thank yeah. you, buddy. See you around. Yeah. And until next time, go forth and market with purpose.